Hey, everybody, it seems like just yesterday that we were hearing that the Dow Jones, S&P, and NASDAQ were all hitting all-time highs. And to be fair, it was just a few weeks ago. But the stock market has kind of taken a negative turn. Um, Inflation's been hotter than expected. Uh, At the day we're recording this, GDP growth came in um, lower than expected. And we are actually halfway to a stock market correction. Um, A correction is generally defined as 10 minutes or 10 minutes, 10% off of recent highs. As I'm talking, the S&P is down by 5% off of its recent highs. The NASDAQ is actually down a little bit more. Um, Hopefully, by the time you're actually watching this, it'll have rebounded a little bit. But if not, we are, uh, we're recording this. We are halfway to a stock market correction, which that was quick. Um, Before we dive into a couple of stocks that we still like and that we're not worried about no matter what the market does, whether it goes into a full-blown correction, even if it goes into a crash, we have some stocks that we will not really worry about what they're going to do in our portfolio long term. Um, before Tyler and I get started, please take a minute and check out the link you see on your screen, fool.com slash Frankel. You get the top 10 stocks from our partner, The Motley Fool. The best way to support this work we're doing, again, that is fool.com slash Frankel. So, Tyler, I own 40-ish stocks in my portfolio. Um only a few of them are stocks that I truly don't worry about, meaning that I don't even have to check every day or don't really, you know, I, I could turn off my computer for the next 10 years and know that they'd be, you know, put me in a good position to make money over the long term. Um, so with, you know, a half market correction right now, um, what are some, what's the stock in your portfolio that's kind of really just not giving you any worries whatsoever? Yeah. Um, well, a little behind the curtain, Matt and I, uh, rock, paper, scissored at the beginning of this to pick Berkshire Hathaway and he won. So I, I had to pick something else. So I'm going to go with Enterprise Products Partners. <laughs> uh, ticker symbol is EPD. This is a master limited partnership uh, owning mostly natural gas liquids pipelines and kind of the associated instru- infrastructure with it. So you know, petrochemical manufacturing facilities, some storage, as well as some you know gathering from the wellhead and stuff like that. Um, the reason that this is kind of the sleep well at night for sort of business for me is twofold. Um, it, it comes basically down to management and ownership. Uh, this is a business that was founded by uh, uh, their, the, the Duncan family was the founding family, and they still own about 30% at least of the uh, shares outstanding. And so management tends to um, more or less run the business in the best interest of the Duncan family, because like, like if, when you own that much, you pretty much have an outsized voice in what happens with this business. And because of that, um, it's managed very, very conservatively. Probably it's probably in terms of the pipeline infrastructure, like this realm of the oil and gas specific like niche realm of the oil and gas industry, it's probably the most conservatively run. It consistently has the lowest leverage on a a debt to EBITDA basis. Um, It tends to have very, very modest dividend growth. The amount of cash that it brings in on any given quarter is well, well above what it pays out in a given quarter and leaves itself you know, ample cash to make modest high return investments. Um, It, it's, those are the kind of, for all of the the time that I have been watching pipeline companies, infrastructure companies, these kind of these high yield investments in the oil and gas industry, it feels like the differentiating factor in pretty much all of them has been um, when management is are good stewards of shareholder capital. It's kind of been the, the North Star for basically anybody in this industry because there's a tendency for a lot of uh, other players in this industry to kind of empire build, which is like, oh, we're just going to keep building and acquiring and we're going to be the biggest ones. And once we're the biggest, we're going to make all the money. But in doing so, they, you know, pay too much for an acquisition or spend too much over budget (laughs) for a particular project. And then your returns get hurt. And then all of a sudden your, your dividend payouts start to get a little shaky. This just this hasn't been the case with enterprise. They've focused extremely well on high return projects. They have the highest returns on capital invested in the industry. 
And because of all of this, at least from an in, in uh, business and operation standpoint, like I can just kind of sleep well. I know that the management team for this business is going to take care of its shareholders over the very, very long term. And, you know, stock is probably never going to do much. It hasn't done anything practically in 10 years, at least in stock price. But, you know, it's a, it pays a 7% dividend yield and the yield excuse me, the dividend has increased like three to 5% annually for the past, past decade. So you kind of combine all those things together. Maybe you get a, a few percentage points in terms of growth here and there, but uh, all in all, that's just kind of the business I think is going to let me sleep really well. High yield, well taken care of. I can just keep reinvesting that business for years and years and years. And before you know it, I have a relatively substantial position throwing an awful lot of cash. Yeah, that's a good one. And I'm sorry I took Berkshire from you, but it really is the, you know, the sleep well at night stock, if you will. Um, now, I have a few in my portfolio I could have picked. Like there's, I've often been told that, you know, my biggest positions make it look like I invest like I'm 80. Um, I have, you know, a lot of real estate investment trusts. A lot of them are considered kind of boring. Um, realty income is a, a, an example of a stock where they could just turn the market off for 10 years. And I would, totally confident that it would it would earn me great returns over the next you know 10 15 years um there's there are a few other examples from my portfolio of stocks i kind of feel that way about but it's really tough to make the case that any of them are better for like just you know worry free investing than berkshire hathaway and that's just because it's not one business you're not looking at any one sector um a lot of people have no idea what sector berkshire hathaway is officially in um because it has so many different businesses it's financials by the way um, because at, at its core, it's an insurance business. Um, but it is a very well diversified portfolio all in one stock. It has over 60 subsidiary businesses, some of which are kind of household names. Uh, if you have Duracell batteries anywhere in your house, if you've uh, eaten at Dairy Queen, you're a Berkshire Hathaway customer. Um, the biggest businesses in its portfolio are insurance. It is the parent company of Geico. It has a few other insurance businesses. Those are, it has an, a big energy business. It's a, I believe it's the biggest uh, utility provider in the country. If not, it's very close to it. Um, Berkshire Hathaway Energy, and it keeps getting bigger. Those are businesses that are really just completely recession-proof. I don't care what the economy does. I still have to pay my auto insurance. I still need to keep lights on in my house. You know, very recession-proof businesses, great collection of businesses, and Warren Buffett and his team have a knack for buying, for getting great deals when they buy businesses. Um, we, Tyler and I off camera were just talking about another company that I invest in that has a history of overpaying for things. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway is not that. They, they only invest if they're getting a really great deal. Their discipline when it comes to acquisitions is extraordinary. Um I can, I mean, that's not to say they're, they're batting a thousand. I can, but I can count on one hand the acquisitions Berkshire made where they really overpaid for something. Um, they have that stock portfolio that's worth about $360 billion as I'm um, recording this. They have a little over 40 stock positions. That, that number varies quarter by quarter. Um, big positions in Apple, in Bank of America, in Coca Cola, in American Express great track record of buying those kind of companies at great values. Um, the Apple investment has made them, I don't want to misspeak, but it's made them close to a hundred billion dollars in profit by, by itself. Um, great track record there. Um, Buffett's two stock pickers who are essentially going to take over the portfolio when he's no longer with the company. Um, also have a great track record. They're the ones who initially made the Apple investment, um, with, with the little bit of capital that they manage. Um, and last but certainly not least, Berkshire has a lot of cash. Uh, it has $168 billion of cash on its balance sheet. Buffett insists on keeping a $30 billion buffer because of the insurance businesses, because you never know what can go wrong. So even with that, they have almost $140 billion of just cash that they could use. But even if they don't use it, which would be a great thing to have, say, if we did get a market crash, they have that much money to put to work. But even if we don't, Right now we're in a high interest rate environment. That money's generating them, you know, eight billion dollars or so of annualized interest income for just having cash sitting there. Um, 
the biggest thing I always get asked about Berkshire is, yeah, but Buffett's 92 years old. What happens when he's not in charge? They have a great succession plan in place. Pretty much the people who are going to be running things after Buffett's gone are already running what they're going to be running. Uh, you know, there's a head of the non-insurance businesses. There's a head of the insurance business. There's two portfolio managers to help him manage a stock portfolio. There's a fantastic succession plan already in place. This is a stock that I don't worry about. If anything, on when Buffett's no longer with the business, if the stock drops, it would be a buying opportunity, not a selling one. Um, great, great business all around and one that I really do not worry about at all. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment, so I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by more than four times, so go to fool.com slash frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 650% as of April 16th, 2024, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 148% as of April 16th, 2024.